So good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. And before starting my presentation, I would like also to thank to development and to Professor Ilariuta for giving me the opportunity to uh, do this seminar and present our latest research article. So the title of my presentation is the same as the article. So the RNA-dependent DNA methylation pathway is required to restrict sporocytal nozzle expression to specify a single female germ cell per course of inhalabidopsis. So it's quite a long title. I hope in the next minutes I explain you why we choose it. So this is where I wanted to start in the explaining you our female germline differentiation of course and in angiosperms and in the model plant that we use for our studies. Uh, uh, italiana, female germline differentiations of course within the pistil. So from the placenta we have the protrusion of the ovules like these finger-like projections and at this point the ovules, uh, of ovule primordial, we can already identify three different zones. So the nocella, the calaza, and the funiculus. Within the nocella is all, everything happens, where is where magic happens, and we can distinguish two very important uh, um, things. So we can distinguish the L1 layer, there are these rows of cells that are on the top of the, of the ovule primordia, and one cell just on the bottom part of this L1 layer starts to enlarge, so this arcosporal cell. The arcosporal cell then enlarges a lot and differentiates into the MMC or the megasper mother cell. And uh, this is a very important phase because then uh, MMC goes into meiosis, gives rise to four uh, different uh, spores, Three of them enter program cell death and, and die, and the most colossal one survives and gives rise to the functional megaspore. The functional megaspore at this uh, point uh, goes into mitosis, into three rounds of mitosis, and gives rise to the mature female gametophyte. The mature female gametophyte or embryo sac has seven uh, different kinds of cells, and upon fertilization, so when the male uh, delivers the two sperm cells inside the embryo sac. One fuses with the egg cell and another with the central cell, and we have the formation of the seeds. So as you all know, seeds are very important for us, for humans, because uh, are a great part of our food uh, source. And of course, studying all the steps that lead to the correct formation of female germline and differentiation and then the accomplishment of fertilization and seed production are very important for our society. So the first player that I want to introduce you into this talk is seed stick. So seed stick is a mass box transcription factor. It was described in several different works uh, that seed stick from our lab and others that seed stick has a very important role during ovule and seed development and was nominated the master regulator of ovule development. Also because seed stick has a very precise pattern of expression as you can see here these pictures that were taken from the seed stick GFP fusion uh, protein line and seed stick is indeed expressed during all phases of ovule development. The most, one of the most striking phenotypes of CC, and it's why uh, the protein is called cystic, is the phenotype that cystic has in a, uh, when the silics are mature. So seeds do not detach from the silic and stay attached to it, contrary to the wild type situation. That's why it's called cystic. But as I was telling you, CC has many other um, different roles during ovary and seed development. And in particular, I just reported here one of our studies that showed the seed stick uh, controls directly two targets that have a very important role and very precise role during the double fertilization process. One of the unpublished um, seed stick phenotypes is this one in the premeiotic ovule. So here you have two pictures, so from optical microscopy, from confocal, and you can see clearly that within the, in the premeiotic ovule, so before meiosis occur in the nocella, we have the enlargement of one cell that then is becoming the megasper mother cell. Instead, in cystic mutant, we see that more than one cell are enlarging. So more than one cell uh, um, are, uh, are enlarging in the cell. And this you can see from the optical or from the confocal pictures. To be more precise, in 46% of cystic mutant ovules analyzed, we see in the, this phenotype. 
In literature, there were already other mutants described with this sort of phenotype that extra enlarging cells were uh, developing in the cell. In particular, this study that was published in 2010 by Olmedo Mofil et al., uh, they show that mutants for RNA-dependent RNA polymerase 6 and Argonaut 9 uh, are, uh, have indeed a very similar phenotype to the one that I just told you of seed stick. Uh, RDR6 and Argon9, they act in the most important uh, RNA-mediated uh, epigenetic pathway in plants, silencing pathway in plants, that is the RNA-dependent DNA methylation pathway. And I will not go through uh, a lot of detail, but silencing in, within this pathway can occur in two different ways, always mediated by the Argonaut protein. So the Argonaut proteins can load one of the strands of the duplex of RNA, of short interference RNA that were formed and perform as mRNA cleavage by complementary. So in this case, we have uh, post-transcriptional gene silencing or argonauts can recruit other proteins such as the uh, DRM, so the domains we arrange methyl transferases, and using again uh, the, the strand of the short interference RNA, they can methylate directly the DNA. So in this case, establishing transcriptional gene silencing. So this is was one thing that we want also to see within this study was whether DRMs mutants have a phenotype in the premeiotic outlook. And indeed, we were able to see it in the optical and the confocal uh, pictures. You can see that more than one cell are enlarging in the nocellus of the, of the DRM1, DRM2, um, double mutant, methyl transferase mutant. And it will be emphasized in 65% uh, of the others analyzed, we have seen this phenotype compared to the wild type that has around 6%. This event of extra enlarging cells also occurs in the wild type. But this result was very important because we were able to see that abolishing methylation in the RDDM pathway, we have exactly the same phenotype that was described for Argonaut 9, for RDR6, and also for 60. So this phenotype where we have in the nucella extra enlarging cells, extra MMC-like cells. We wanted a little bit to connect the dots, so we wanted to understand the connection between seed stick and Argonaut 9 and the RDDM pathway members. So we performed the chromatin immunoprecipitation two studies using the line of the mutant seed stick complemented with the seed stick, the GFP fusion protein. And we did uh, so a chromatin immunoprecipitation studies, and we were able to detect three different regions enriched. Uh, one of them fall into the uh, promoter of Argonaut, another two in the promoter of RDR6. And within this uh, experiment, we were able to see that cystic could bind directly to Argonaut 9 and RDR6 promoters, activating them because we know that Argonaut 9 and RDR6 are not regulated in cystic mutant background. So this is a very important uh, piece of the, of the story. Then, of course, we have these mutants that present these extra enlarged cells, but these like extra MMC-like cells. So we want to understand which was the identity of this cell. So for this, we use two different markers. We use a marker for the MMC identity, knuckles, yellow FP, and for the functional, for the, the functional uh, megaspore identity, the promoter of LC2. They are of this. So two different markers. When we uh, uh, cross it, the knuckles marker, as you can see, has a very precise expression in the, the MMC, when the MMC is differentiated. When we introgress into the mutants, what, you, what we clearly saw is that um, only one of the two cells were expressing the marker. For instance, here in seed stick, first of all, not all of the others are expressing the marker, only 62% of the others in 60 and 61% in the RAM1, the RAM2 were expressing the marker, but the others that were expressing the marker, when we have two clear uh, enlarged cells, only one was expressing. So this was telling us that the extra cell was not expressing it. So as I told you, MMC then goes into meiosis. So we wanted to understand even if the marker was not expressed, if the if the extra enlarged cells could go into meiosis. And we use a specific uh, color staining for this because uh, we when the MMC goes into meiosis, uh, callos is um, is uh, deposited in a very specific pattern within the spore. So uh, for instance, here we have already at the second part of the meiosis and we have two clear cell plates. And when we analyze seed stick music and DRM1, DRM2 mutants, what we saw is that only one of the two cells was going to meiosis and it was kind of squeezed to the side. So 
the cell was still there, but was not uh, going to meiosis. So no expression of identity marker and not going into meiosis. Then the functional marker I show you here, uh, the, our results. So in the wild type situation, as you can see, this functional um, megaspore marker is very specific for the ovule uh, after meiosis. So at the MMC stage, it's not uh, active at all, only when the F, uh, when FM, the functional megaspore is formed and then the ovule goes into gametogenesis. And uh, this situation was also seen, for instance, in seed seek mutants, where uh, the extra cells did not gain any kind of expression of the marker, but even after meiosis, only one cell was marked. So this means that the extra cell did not have again the marker on it. At this point that we have the situation that the extra cells did not express neither the MMC marker, neither the functional megaspore marker, we all wonder which kinds of targets CITSIC and RDDM could be uh, indeed uh, regulating. And here enters our third layer. So sporosuteus nitrile is a putative transcription factor that was described in the uh, 90s, so in 1999, by two different groups that I have two names, sporocytes and Nuzo, to have a very important role in the MMC differentiation, because as you can see here from these pictures, so the MMC is um, in the wild type is very clear, and in the Newton situation, none of the cells are really enlarging and forming the MMC. So we wanted to understand how sporocytos was behaving in our mutants. So for that, we have cloned the sporocytless GFP fusion protein, including all the genomic region, five prime untranslated, three prime untranslated OTRs and the putative promoter. And as you can see here in the wild type uh, situation, what happens is that A, B and C, in the very early stages of ovule development, the sporocytless uh, protrudes, uh, sorry, the ovules protrudes from the placenta and we have sporocytless in the top of the L1, it be, continues in the L1 layer and going on in the next phases and when MCMC is already formed, sporocytes keeps on the L1. It's always here on the L1. So we cross it, this marker with uh, our um, mutants. And as you can see in Argon R9 and in the RM1, the RM2, we choose these two mutants because as I told you before, they are the major effectors of the RDDM pathway. And indeed, in these mutants, what you can see, we choose is a picture where we have one ovule with two enlarged cells and one ovule with only one. In the ovule that has only one enlarged cell, the pattern is very similar to the wild type situation. And in the ovule where we have two enlarged cells, the sporocytes ectopically expressed in the other one, as you can see in this picture and also in the 3D projection. Very uh, similar situation was found in the RM1, the RM2 mutants, where again, uh, we have uh, sporocytes ectopically expressed in the L1 layer, and this is very clear with the 3D uh, projection. So what happens in our mutant is that we have clearly this extra enlarged cell in the nucella, and that sporocytes is uh, ectopically expressed in, the, in, the, um, in this mutant's background. So with this, we arrive to a model. A model that we propose is that sporocytes should be only expressed in the top cells of the L1 layer and should be repressed in the others. This repression uh, should be done, as I uh, was explaining to you, with a seed stick mediated RDDM um, repression of sporocytes nozzle, because seed stick is able to activate RDR6 and Argonal 9. Argonal 9 can recruit the RM1, the RM2, and then can silence directly SPL, methylating with this we don't know, or through uh, other, maybe through other uh, genes or Ts or repetitive sequence that then will act on SPL. SPL at this point is only expressed in the top two cells, and uh, as we saw, is only in the, is confined to the L1, is not in the cell that will become the MMC. So at this point, some sort of signal should be uh, indeed produced by SPL, so the guided by SPL, and should travel to the cell uh, right below to uh, start this process of the um, enlarging of the cells, so this first step on female germline uh, differentiation. Of course, in our mutants, SPL is expressed also in these cells, and instead of having only one, we have more than one cell. So of course, uh, the major points that we saw with our work is that absence of methylation leads to this multiple uh, mmc like phenotype of multiple enlarged cells that sits the controls in a direct way uh, two members of the RDDM pathway that is for a expression is only confined to these cells 
let's precisely act in a non-cell autonomous manner because you know expressing the MMC and that indeed sporocytolase is sufficient for this um, precursor formation but not for the function. So I would like now uh, just to end my talk to, to, uh, to thank to the people that helped me doing this work. So I would like to thank to Professor Lucia Colombo for all her help, scientific discussions, for everything, because without her, this project will not be here today. Uh, to all the people from our lab that were di directly involved in this project, and of course, to our collaborators, in particular from the University of Oxford, to Professor Hugh Dickinson for everything, for the scientific discussion, for the manuscript, and so on. And from the University of Adelaide to Professor Matthew Tucker that helped us with experiments, with discussions, with the analysis. So to him and to his group, a big thank. And to all our funding that without them we will not be here. And I would like to thank you all, all for your attention and I'll be here to take any, any questions. Thank you. So there our first question is uh, uh, from Aidan. So, uh, I think you said STK has other roles in development. In these contexts, does STK also act through the RDDM and SPL pathway? Okay, so um, basically what we were able to clearly identify is that SIDSTIC activates these two uh, <clears throat> members of the RDDM pathway that are argon 9 and RDR6. So SIDSTIC is able to bind directly to the promoter region of these uh, genes and to activate their expression. Uh, of course, one uh, I think is also related to the, because this question is whether SIDSTIC could uh, act on sporocytes directly. And we did test this and we did uh, control the sporocytes uh, promoter for binding, uh, binding sites, so for CAR-G boxes that are uh, the binding sites that are recognized by the MEDS box transcription factors, and we tested, and indeed uh, sporocytes is not a direct target of SIDSTIC. So the effect that uh, SIDSTIC and the RDDM has in sporocytes uh, is through the RDDM. So SIDSTIC activates these two members of the RDDM, and then um, we have the uh, ectopic expression of SPL. So we don't silence correctly sporocytes, and so we have this ectopic expression. But SIDSTIC is not able to uh, act directly on, uh, on, uh, on SPL. So then we have a question from uh, Seema. So uh, what do you think then controls the transition into a functional MMC? Are there likely lots of factors that act non cell autonomously? Yeah, this is a great question, of course. This is what we are wondering in, uh, in, our, in our research line is which is the factor that indeed uh, can move through, um, so from the L1 to the cell that will then become the MMC-like cell. There are a lot of studies that um, uh, that are, were uh, published that, for instance, microRNAs, so they can travel from cell to cell, but also transcription factors can travel from cell to cell, actually. So the uh, nature of this signal is something that it remains, of course, uh, still a mystery for us, but uh, we, we would like to, of course, identify, and we are working in some of our research lines to try to identify uh, which is the signal that goes from the L1 to the MMC to then give a specification of the megastome mother cell. So the SPL protein itself is not moving. I do you know no. is that very clear? Okay. From this, from this, uh, from uh, from our results, it was really clear that. In the wild type situation, the protein remained always in the L1 layer. And also then when uh, the MMC goes into meiosis, it's always around. It's never going in. So with the, have, with have you tried protein. to misexpress this gene in the mutant in the in this MMC and see if, if by just expressing the gene in, the, in that location actually could rescue after all? So, uh, this is is a very good suggestion, actually. So, using a specific promoter for the MMC. So, but what we did is that we uh, express it ectopically, like it's happening in our in our mutant. So, we used not the specific promoter for the MMC, but we used the constitutive promoter. And what we did see is these uh, extra cells enlarging all the time without going into uh, meiosis. So. We saw that uh, this ectopic expression indeed leads to the enlargement, but not to, to the function. 
good. Okay, then the last question from Alex. Uh, so were you able to identify any specific binding motifs for SDK that might highlight other target genes? Any binding motifs for SDK? Um... No, uh, so SeedStick is a Metzbox transcription factor at the end. So we already know that SeedStick is binding to um, Cardibox sequences, of course. This could be a tool for us to screen for other target genes that could have a role in MMC differentiation, of course. Uh, but um, till now, the only two that we found that had indeed uh, uh, a role within MMC uh, formation it was Ago9 and RBR6 as direct targets of, uh, of SeedStick. Okay, so one last question from Lucia Padurova. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you observed other genes which ex whose expression was misregulated in SDK background? I assume that Ago9 and RDR6 can be involved in transcriptional silencing of other important genes. Yeah, exactly. We have, uh, yes, we have seen other genes that are indeed uh, misexpressed in SeedStick background. And as I told in the, in the presentation, Argonal 9 and RDR6 are indeed now regulated in cystic mutant, mutant background. And this is one of the ways that we are using also to find new uh, targets that could act in this process. Let's say that the most uh, um, important thing now is to understand which is the signal that is controlled from SPL and that will indeed give uh, the function to this allergic cell. This is what we are uh, working more now, but it's of course will have an impact in cystic mutant background. So you, we will have a different level of expression of this putative signal in cystic mutant background, of course. Thank you very much, Marta.